welcome to the Tuesday edition of the DC Today. Uh, the S&P and NASDAQ have been up seven days in a row, which is the longest winning streak in um, about two years. And so from that big sell-off we had had as bond yields were going higher uh, near the end of October, and then what has taken place in the last couple of days of October here into the first week of November You've had quite a significant rally. Now, you know, let's caveat this a little. The delta between the cap weighted S&P 500 and the equal weighted or even weighted S&P 500 is pretty big. You know, what does that mean? It is a way of saying that the returns are very top heavy, right? That you could take all 500 companies uh, with an equal weighting in the S&P and get a certain return. And when it's a meaningfully higher number, in the way that the S&P is constructed with the proportionality of the index being the market capitalization of the company. It means those large multi-trillion dollar companies, trillion dollar companies, 700 billion, 800 billion, 500 billion, those very large companies carry a much bigger weight. The smaller companies may carry a much smaller weight. And what that means when the delta between that ladder methodology versus the even weighted when the delta is large, it means you have a very top heavy market and that is generally much less sustainable. Nevertheless, good returns for the market. Uh, the Dow itself up 12, 1300 points in the last uh, seven market days. Um, oil was down over 4% today. That was the fly in the ointment for um, oil uh, traders. Uh, maybe traders not thinking that the Middle East stuff will get worse. Uh, oil back to the, where do we close? 77 and a half. So um, for the first time in a little while, probably the first time, yeah, it's the first time since the initial Hamas invasion um, of Israel, October the 7th, this will be the first time oil has dipped below $80. Uh, so we'll we'll see where that goes. Um, S&P earnings, there is still about 18% of companies to report. We had a couple report after hours today. We have a couple reporting next week, and then we're kind of done um, out of, you know, the 30 to 35 companies that we own. We're down to just uh, uh, after today, only two to go. There were two that did report today, but, you know, the final 10, 11%, whatever. Um, but, yeah, I mean, it, it looks like you're on track for earnings to have grown year over year by 5.7% with revenue that only grew 1.2%. So that is a pretty meaningful margin expansion, a better than expected profit result, um, and, and probably pretty good reason to believe that margins can hold when earnings have been able to expand despite higher cost of capital like that. Um, nevertheless, uh, some bad news out there. Uh, WeWork, uh, there's a link to this in the DC today, today. Uh, has declared bankruptcy. It does appear to have been a largely pre-negotiated situation with creditors, and there may not end up being a big explosion of vacancies. There's going to be some, but it looks like they may have been able to work out certain arrangements with some of the creditors that that may um, change terms substantially, wipe away a lot of debt, give the ownership of the company, obviously, to creditors versus uh, equity holders who will, I'm sure, be wiped out in the bankruptcy and yet not necessarily move out a lot of the leases. We'll see what the ramifications like of that just disaster of a shiny object company uh, could end up being across other commercial real estate assets. Um, just an anecdotal thought as I was looking at some commodity charts uh, before the world awoke this morning. Manufacturing has been weak 12 months in a row. We know about the alleged issues in construction, whether it's commercial or residential. And certainly we know about China weakness. Yet iron ore is doing really quite well. Copper, I wouldn't say it's doing well, but it's hung in there. Certainly not the kind of drop you'd expect in copper prices based on the holy trifecta of China construction and manufacturing. Just saying. Um, all right. What else do we want to go through here? So Dow was up 57 points today. The S&P was up 28 basis points. And NASDAQ was up 90 basis points. Consumer discretionary was the leading sector, up over 
Energy was the worst, down over 2%, but that's with oil down over 4 Bond yields were down 8 basis points, back to 4.58%. So a little bit of a rally again in the long bond. And I want to throw out there that the trade deficit came in about $2 billion higher than expected. $61.5 billion, it was I think fifty nine seven was the projection that we were seeing. Keep in mind, trade deficit means that we import more than we export. We have to pay for the difference with dollars, which means more dollars going to the country that is exporting to us that they then have to take those dollars and usually buy treasury bonds with them. There's other dollar denominated assets they could buy. Uh, you know, people remember back in the day we were buying Pebble Beach and Rockefeller Center um, and uh, more recently the Water for Storia with those dollars in the hands of foreign investors. Usually it's treasury bonds. Do I think bond yields fell on the news of a wider than expected trade deficit? And the fact that total trade was up $14.2 billion from last month's level, I do. You can't really ever prove this stuff. So I don't like to lean into it when various causation allegations are both non-falsifiable and non-verifiable. But I think it's worth pointing out. Um, someone asked me what I thought about this whole idea of tax loss selling and that there's a big push that people should be harvesting tax losses all the time. And I just want to reiterate our philosophy. It's in the Ask David in DC Today, but um, I'm not done talking here on DC Today podcast and video, so I'll keep going. I, I do believe two things can be true at once, and in fact are true at once, that the tax tail wagging the investment dog is a very bad idea. And yet at the same time, some form of tax gain management and tax loss management in the month of December, the end of the year, when you kind of get up against that final month, um, I think that could be a very sensible strategy when it's executed prudently. So yes, taking unrealized losses against realized gains and buying back the positions 30 days later because of what is called the wash sale rule and having a reasonable and efficient tax pair, they can never be perfect, but trying to make them as reasonably correlated as possible so one is not naked in that 30-day period. I think it's a prudent thing to do, but that is a far cry from those who obsess about tax harvesting throughout the whole year and uh, er at every opportunity or essentially turning the portfolio into an active harvesting as opposed to buying the companies you want to own. When If there's a company that makes it into a portfolio we manage, we want to own it. And to be out of it for any reason is a at best case necessary evil. And other than that, shouldn't happen, meaning for some purpose of, around tax management. So yes, the long answer is we believe in it, but we do it within very tight confines and very prudently. That's our philosophy of tax management at the Bonson Group. All right, um, I'm going to leave it there. Brian Sattel will be with you tomorrow as I'll be at meetings at Blackstone in the afternoon. And he'll be bringing it to you on Thursday as well because I'll be at meetings at Golden Tree in the late afternoon, a couple of specific meeting things I have going on this week that happen to run in the time we normally be recording. Uh, I'll be with you in the Dividend Cafe Friday. And of course, please send your questions at thebonsongroup.com anytime. Thanks for listening. Thanks for reading. Thanks for watching the DC Today.